sort of my caveat again to remind you is, is there's, I can't say everything that the Bible tells us about eternity in one sermon. So we're just kind of looking at this piece by piece by piece. And so if you find yourself maybe getting a little frustrated or like, oh, I think the Bible says something about this somewhere else, that's okay. We'll probably get there. And so uh, today's conversation, we're going to kind of pick up where we left off last week. And so if you have a Bible with you, whether it's in paper or digital form, go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, we're going to go back. We're going to read a few verses that we looked at last week. We're going to start specifically at verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. And we're going to unpack what the Bible tells us about what takes place in the transition from life here on this earth into eternity. So that's kind of the big theme of today's conversation. Uh, so let me just read and then we'll, 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 t we'll talk about this more. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I'm going to start reading in verse 16 out of the New Living Translation. This is what we're told. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout and the voice of the archangel with the tr and, the, and with the trumpet of call of God. First the believers who have died will rise from their graves, then together with them we who are still alive and remain here on this earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, then we will be with the Lord forever. So you remember, we're talking about when, according to what Paul writes here, when you die you're in the ground, and we're going to unpack what that looks like today, and then when Christ comes back we're going to meet, the dead in Christ will rise first, they will meet Jesus in the air, and then those who are still living will also meet Jesus in the air. And so that's what we're told here, so I'll go to verse 5. So he says, now concerning how and when, how and when, or maybe your Bible translations say, concerning the time and the date, when's this going to happen? Because the, the people of, the, of, of, this, of the Bible were saying, when's Jesus going to come back? We know he died on the cross. We know he rose from the grave. He said he's coming back. How long is it going to be before he comes back? And so we're going to spend the majority of our conversation today talking about these two words, how and when, how and when. Because in the Greek translation, which English translation doesn't do justice to, it opens up a whole new world. And so I'm going to try to unpack that for you, what that looks like in this transition from life here on this earth into heaven. Okay, we'll come back to that. So he's saying concerning how and when, when's Jesus going to come back? He says, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write to you for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them. As suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin, then there will be no escape. Verse 4. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief, for you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to the darkness and the night. Now let's stop there for a second. Write this down for those of you taking notes in your app. Point number one, Christ's return encapsulates a heavenly time perspective. Christ's return encapsulates a heavenly time perspective. Let me explain what I mean by that. In the Greek language, which was the original language that the New Testament portion of the Bible was written in, the Apostle Paul, as I mentioned already, uses two words for time here in verse 1 as he explains sort of the timing of Christ's return. The people are looking for Christ's return. They're saying, when's it going to happen? How long is it going to be? And he says, how and when, time and date, this is what it's going to look like. And in the Greek word, Greek language, he uses two words, which I've listed there in your app notes. The first word he uses is the word chroni, chroni. And the second word is chiroi or chrono. I, can, I don't know why I'm so tongue twisted today. Chroni, I'll just say, and, and chroni, okay? They're super descriptive. So write this down. Chroni, chroni means chronological. It kind of sounds the same, doesn't it? Chroni, chronological. The second word is chiroi. There we go. Chiroi, the second word for time, and that translated means qualitative. So quality. So time can be experienced chronologically and time can be experienced 
in terms of what's the ex my experience in that time. So let me give you an example of that. Let's take a quick poll. A show of hands. Okay, this is an either or option. Show of hands, if you have a choice of spending 30 minutes, okay, that's the time capsule. If you have a choice between spending 30 minutes sitting in your dentist chair, the chair at the dentist's office, or 30 minutes, same 30 minutes, sitting in a chair at the beach with a friend, how many of you are going to choose sitting in the chair at your dentist's office? Dentist's office. I like my dentist. That's a good choice for me. How many of you would spend time with a friend at the beach sitting in a chair? Okay. Now, it's the same 30 minutes, but why are all of you, with the exception of maybe one person, saying that you would choose... 30 minutes at the beach versus 30 minutes at the dentist office. Cronoy, it's the same 30 minutes, but Cronoy, one's more pleasurable than the other. Would you agree? I would much rather, this, I'm going to put my words in your mouth. I, Mike, Pastor Mike, I would much rather sit at the beach with my friend. And those 30 minutes would go like this, right? 30 minutes is up already? Versus sitting in my chair, the dentist chair, with my mouth open going, how much longer do I have to keep my mouth open? Are you with me? One feels longer than the other. You got me? So 30 minutes is chronoi. Chiroi is the experience that we have in those 30 minutes. One goes by like this. What do you mean? I just got here to the beach. So I'm sorry, time for you to go. Versus, oh my goodness, only, it's only been 15 minutes. I got to keep my mouth open for, are you with me? Okay. It's important for you to understand that. So Paul is reminding his readers here in verse 1 that time, as it relates to Jesus' return, can be experienced from two different perspectives. Here's another example. With a show of hands, how many of you have ever lost a loved one to death? Parent, friend, co-worker, right? Somebody we know has died. From the survivor's perspective, those of us who are still alive, when we look at time, we look at it through a chronoi perspective, right? My loved one died on this date. I can't believe it's been this many years since they passed, right? I miss them so much. That perspective is a chronoi perspective. But when we look at Christ's return through the person who passed, it's it's a, it's, a, it's a moment. You know, the Bible tells us in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, which we looked at last week, Paul says, when Christ comes back, it's going to be in a twinkling of the eye, in a flash of a moment. The dead in Christ will rise first. Those of us who are still here will rise next. Okay, let me, another example. How many of you went to sleep last night? Or did you take an all liner? Everybody go to bed last night? Now, unless you got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, chances are good that when you closed your eyes last night, you were tired, and when you opened your eyes this morning, you felt refreshed. And for those of us who didn't go to the bathroom last night, in the middle of the night, I recognize the audience that I'm speaking to here. Five, six, seven years passed that you were unaware of. Are you with me? chronologically you close your eyes in this moment and you open your eyes in this moment and chronologically all this time passed from a chronoi perspective but from a chiroi perspective your experience was now I'm first I'm tired and now I feel refreshed right two different perspectives same amount of time here's my point what the bible writer is trying to emphasize here what Paul is telling to the Thessalonica Christians and what he's telling you and me is that as we wait for Jesus' return for those of us who are still alive why is Jesus taking so long when's he going to come back it's been at least from their perspective it's been at least 10 years since Jesus ascended to heaven that's the chronoi perspective 
But when you close your eyes and you open them up, you don't have that perspective. So when my dad, for example, died five years ago, he was feeling tired and weak. And of course, that's a, but from the chronoi perspective, he closes his eyes. The next time he opens them up, he's going to be feeling rejuvenized as he meets with the, with, with the Lord. There is no sense of chronoi. Are you with me? When you die, there's no sense of passing of time. You close your eyes in one moment, you're tired. The next moment when you open your eyes, like everybody just blink right now. You blink and now you're, you're rising in the air. And so what Paul is saying is, those of us who are still living, we live our life with this chronoid, this chronological time. And so we miss it. For, but for those of you who have lost loved ones, they die one moment and the next moment they're meeting you in the air. There's no, there's no separation of time. Are you with me? The Apostle Paul is trying to teach us here that Christ's return encapsulates a heavenly time perspective. Friends, God is outside of time. God's perspective of time is different than, than yours or mine, which might be another reason why the Apostle Peter tells us in this book of 2 Peter chapter 3 that to the, day, to the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. God is outside of time. You understand me? Are you with me? Now we're going to talk about in, previous, in upcoming s sections about what happens. Like last week, by the way, this, this sermon series is amazing. Last Sunday after the service, we sat out probably 30 minutes just out on the parking lot with Chance and Joseph who were in junior high talking about do animals go to heaven? Is there a difference between your soul and your spirit and your body? Like all these, we were having these deep theological conversations out in the parking lot. I thought this sermon series is amazing. This is, this is exciting stuff. But for today, what I think what Paul is telling us and what I want you to understand is recognize the timing, that God's timing is different than ours. There's this chronological time and there's this chiroid time. And all I'm saying is that when you close your eyes for the last time here on this earth, when you breathe your last breath, one moment you're, gone, you're saying goodbye and the next moment you're in the air with your loved ones. Does that make sense? Okay, enough on that. Point number two. A second thing that the Apostle Paul wants these Thessalonians, Thessalonica Christians to know, and what he wants you and me to know, is that Christ's return will impact everyone. There is no escape. Every person, whether they are alive or deceased, will be impacted by Christ's return. Everyone will be impacted by Christ's return. Now here's a sobering truth about this, point number three in your app notes. Christ's return will catch many unprepared. Christ's return will catch many unprepared. Paul reminds us here in verse 2 that Christ's return will be sudden. It will happen unexpectedly for the unexpected. Like a thief who comes in the night. Remember this thumbnail that we have? This picture of this woman with this oil lamp and, and, and the Holy Spirit or the light. Or, and in the background we've got the, the, the evil Batman, I call him. The devil, he's in the shadows. It's the devil. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. There's a spiritual warfare taking place, brothers and sisters. The devil does not want you to experience Christ. He does not want you to experience heaven. He, that his job is to hang in the shadows, to cry to cause, cause you to fall. And Jesus preached in Matthew chapter 25, which we looked at two weeks ago. He's saying, stay alert. Make sure you've got oil in your lamp, so to speak. Paul writes here in verse 6, he says, be on your guard, don't fall asleep. And the interesting word that Paul uses for the word sleep in the Greek language is a word called, it's, it's pronounced kathudo. Kathudo. Which when translated into the English language means don't become morally indifferent. In fact, in other places of the New Testament, when this word kathudo is used, it often references to somebody as an enemy of Christ. If you're an enemy of Christ, if you're someone who's anti-Jesus, you are kathudo, you are, you are anti-God. The devil could be considered to be kathudo. He's an morally indifferent. He's 
an enemy of Christ. So what Paul is saying is don't let the devil trick you into believing that you've got lots of time to make your decision about Jesus. He's saying, church, don't push Jesus away because you're risking spending eternity in hell, which is a big gamble. And Paul is saying there's many who will be caught sleeping. There's many who will be caught unprepared when Christ returns. And so the question for you to answer for yourself today and me is are you ready to meet Christ? Are you ready to have a relationship with him? You know, have you admitted that you have, yet that you're a sinner? That's really all it involves having a relationship with Jesus. Going, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have a propensity to sin. I have a propensity to, to pursue the pleasures of this world. Who here doesn't? Who here does? We all do. We all have things that the world's calling us to pursue. That's part of being human. Those things can't keep you from heaven unless you, without Jesus, if you have Jesus in your life, Paul was saying, have you invited Jesus to transform you into the person that God wants you to be? If you haven't, then I want to lead you to in that doing that right now. Okay? So let's say a prayer together. Put your palms, put, your, put everything down. Put your, open your palms. It's just like saying, Lord, I'm opening my palms. I'm opening the, my heart. I'm opening my mind. And in this prayer, so you take a deep breath and exhale. Just say, Jesus, as much as I know about the Bible, I know this. Say, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that I make choices that hurt you and probably hurt the people in my world. So today, Jesus, in this moment, I ask that you would forgive me. I ask that you would take control of my life. Because Jesus, in my own strength, I want to pursue the world. I want to pursue the world's pleasures. So pray this. Just say, Jesus, I need your help to live differently. I want you, Jesus, to shape me into the person that you want me to be. Because on my own, I can't do it. On my own, I don't even really want to do it. I like these things that I'm involved with, Lord. I like these pleasures that, 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 that I think bring me happiness. And so I don't even want to ask you to necessarily, Jesus, to, 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 to take these pleasures, but it just tells me that I need to. So, Lord, give me the desire to ask you to want to take these pleasures away. Lord, I need your help to become the person that you want me to be because on my own, I can't be that. So shape me, Lord, beginning right now, as much as I know, with all my sin, Jesus, I'm asking you to begin right now to shape me to the person that you want me to be. Because I want to spend eternity in heaven. This is my salvation prayer today. Amen. Friends, most of you know this. There's not an instant magic pill that you and I can take to become a spiritual giant, right? We don't just automatically become God lovers. At least I don't. In my life, I've been a Christian for most of my life, and I still struggle with stuff of the world. I still want to pursue things of the flesh that I know that will hurt the people in my world. You know, just this past week, the, the big news was another pastor came out and said, yeah, I committed a sin, and now i got to step away from my ministry. I live with that every single day. That if I, if I have an affair, for example, if I cheat on my wife with my relationship with Robin and the Lord, that it's going to impact people. Would you agree with that? That's, the, that's one of the responsibilities. If I get arrested with a DUI, it's going to impact people. My sin impacts people. But guess what? So does yours. But we all have the same... We all have the same desires. And so on our own, we can't, we can't live that life that we want to live that's going to create 
health and prosperity for our loved ones. We need Jesus' help. That's what being a Christian is all about, yes? Where you wake up every morning and say, Lord, I, I want you to be a part of my life because of my own flesh. I'm not going to go there. I need you to help me. I need you to help me to want that life. And I feel like the, 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 the longer I'm a Christian, the higher I go, and if you will, in, in, in leadership circles, the temptations get stronger. I'm now the oldest guy in the room. I've talked about that, right? And now I'm being invited into, to, to mentor and coach young pastors who are, who are just starting out in a ministry. And I'm like, wow, how come the temptations are getting stronger for me, not weaker? Because the devil knows that if I fall, it's going to have a ripple effect. So like you, I wake up every morning saying, Jesus, please forgive me. I need your help. I need your help. And when I fall, please forgive me. And get up and you keep moving forward, right? If you today, for the first time, pray to invite Jesus into your life, welcome to the family. And recognize that you got a whole bunch of people around you who want to walk with you and grow in that. And together, we're going to help each other grow. Our, yes, is that true? It's true. Okay, so let's land the plane. Point number four and point number five. Let me give them both to you at the same time. Christ's return is a fear buster. And Christ's return is a confidence booster. Christ's return is a fear buster. And Christ's return is a confidence booster. If you are a Christian, if you have asked Jesus to forgive your sins and be the Lord of your life, you do not need to worry or fear that you are going to miss out on heaven. If you have asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and forgive your sins and help transform you in the person that he has created you to be, you need not fear or worry that you are going to miss out on Christ's return. Your salvation is secure. Christ's work on the cross paid the price to secure your ticket into heaven. Consequently, you and I can live every day with confidence. Look at what Paul writes in verse 7. Let me read out a few more verses and we'll be done. He says, Night is the time, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 7, Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. This is great. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour his anger on us. Christ died for us so that whether we're dead or alive, when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. Friends, heaven's security, Paul tells us here, that heaven's security is received from Jesus. And whether we are alive or dead, at Christ's return, eternity awaits. And if you're a Christian, you can know that heaven awaits. Because, point number six, the last point of our morning, is Christ's return will usher in eternal life. Christ's return will usher in eternal life. So Paul writes, until Christ returns, until that time arrives, live in the light. Until Christ returns, until that time arrives, whether we're alive or dead, continue to, well, for certainly for as we're alive, continue to pursue growing in your relationship with Jesus as you're doing right now. Until Christ returns, continue to, to, to pursue growing in your understanding of the Bible as you're doing right now. Paul says Christ is coming back. And until that day arrives, he says, make the most of every day. You know, I'm, I feel like the older I get, the, the more I'm telling people this, 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 this thing is, stop living in fear. 
And when you make a mistake and things don't go as well as you, th you had hoped and there's maybe a relational breakup in your life, it doesn't mean you have to be unhappy the rest of your life. Keep moving forward. You know, I don't know if you guys know this or not, and this is, I'm always careful, my whole life I've always been careful about talking about my kids from the stage, but today I'm going to, it's Father's Day, I'm going to take a liberty. Both of our daughters have had a divorce. One's divorced and the other one's in the process of getting divorced right now. And I'll just tell you, if you've never been through a divorce, it's painful. And as a parent, it's painful. And I've tried to, we've tried to raise our daughters not because, we don't ask them to do, to live differently because their dad's a pastor. I'm, I put my pants on one leg at a time, just like you do. I'm not any different, I just have a different role and responsibility maybe than some of you. My job is different than your job. And so our daughters, we've always tried to re, not place on them these expectations that a lot of people place upon pastor's kids. But I've told my daughters, I said, it didn't work out. You saved yourself. You tried to do all the right things. You married good, a good Christian guy. And for a number of reasons, which I'm not going to share with you here today, your marriage broke up. And it's messy. And there's lots of carnage. And some of you know firsthand what that feels like. Now, not every pastor is going to say this, to my, but I will from, to my daughters. Keep moving forward. Just because that relationship didn't work out for you doesn't mean that you shouldn't pursue another relationship and get, possibly get married and, and, and move on. And I'm just sharing that from a, a, a very personal experience to say we all have those stories in our life where we've had what maybe we would call a failure. That things didn't work out that we had hoped. Maybe because of a, our own sinful choices or maybe because of the sinful choices of the people that we're in relationship with. Don't stay there. The devil wants you to get stuck there. No, Kairoi, there's better for you ahead. That's what Jesus does. He comes and he changes us and, it, and we try to do the best that we can with the choices that we made. And if there's, if there's a need to ask for forgiveness and hopefully you know, provide goodwill to the people we've hurt, great. At the same time, keep moving forward. Is that a message some of you need to hear today? Just because you failed at one business doesn't mean you shouldn't think about starting another business. Just because one job fired you from a job doesn't mean that you shouldn't apply and try something else. Are you with me? That's what the gospel teaches us here. And what Paul says, and I'm going to close with this. He says, until the day comes when, when we breathe our final breath here on this earth and we're flying up in the air to meet Jesus, which, by the way, is not a bad experience to have, I don't think. Until the day arrives for you to breathe your final breath and close your eyes only to open them to meet the Lord in the air, he says, encourage each other. That's how he ends this. He says, build each other up, Right? For as you do, Paul basically saying, you'll put a smile on God's face. So here's the takeaway for you and me for today. Who, who can you encourage today? Who can you build up today? Dads, just because it's Father's Day doesn't mean that you could have a day off. Who can you love on today? You know, Jesus once preached, he says, let your light shine so that men may see your good works. Not so that they'll pat you on the back, but so that they'll, they'll give glory to God and go, wow, how do, you how do you rebound so much from that failure? Well, on my own strength, it's not me, it's, it's Jesus. He's changing me, he's transforming me, he's helping me learn how to forgive and let go and move on. And that's why we come every week, is it not? To have a bit of a reset. To think back, okay, how did I do this week? Okay, I could have done better. Okay, Lord, here I am again. With my breath, help me to be an encourager. Help me to be someone who builds other people up. To live with confidence, not fear. To look forward to the day when you return and take me home. But until that day comes, Lord, I want to be an encourager. Anybody want that?
Until Christ come back, I want to be someone who builds people up. Yes. As Paul said, I say to you, just as you are already doing. Let's close in prayer. Would you stand? I'm just going to give you a closing blessing. Would you please stand? Put your palms out, everybody. Those of you watching online, put your palms out. Look up. Look at me. Sisters and brothers, I bless you today with an increased capacity with God's help to be an encourager. I bless you today with God's help and strength with an increased capacity to be a people builder upper. I bless you today as you await for Christ's return. In the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, amen and amen and amen. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Uh, Sheila brought donuts. I know a lot of you got them already. I can see the sprinkles on the carpet here. But so glad you're here. So glad you're tuning in. If you have a prayer request, please let us know. Please use your app to let us know. If you want to give and support our ministry financially, please, you can give online or there's an offering box in the back. Encourage you to do that too. All that to say, have a great day. Build each other up. Encourage one another. And get some love from somebody right now with a hug. God bless you and we'll see you next week.